There's something wonderful about walking in nature out in a lava field or uh, out in the mountains searching for Arctic foxes. Using all your senses, listening to every sound, watching the wildlife around you, if there is some, like the birds, looking for any sign of this wonderful animal, the Arctic fox. I don't know if we are completely in this for the photography or uh, maybe also for the experience. I would say the experience is a huge part of this because it's not a good business to sell Arctic fox fo photos. We don't sell much of them, actually minimal, very minimal. It's possibly because in Iceland, where our main market is, the Arctic fox is considered to be a predator. And uh, people don't like to have photos of predators like the Arctic fox on the walls. But still we are trying to change the attitude towards the Arctic fox. I guess that's one of the goals we have. The difficult thing about photographing them and making a video, maybe like this one, about them is that you have hunters in Iceland willing to kill them. I know that because I have a hunting background, I used to, and uh, well, there are a lot of eyes out there trying to find out where the Arctic foxes are and uh, thousands of Arctic foxes are shot every year in Iceland. So we have to be careful not to reveal locations and still go all over the place. There are, there's no part of the country where we have not found an Arctic fox. You need to stay out in the field, walk for miles and uh, in difficult terrain to find them. And I really like this. It's something primitive in searching for this elusive animal using tools like this great binocular and uh, looking into everything you see ahead of you. And we have often found the Arctic foxes by keeping our eyes open looking at everything because these if you're looking for cubs for example they can sleep almost anywhere after a long search we found uh, four cubs sleeping in the sun it was amazing and it was absolutely i would say a, a pure luck we found them because i was looking through this Swarovski binocular, seeing something tiny, tiny brown. I saw the back of one of the cubs. I guess it was 200 meters away. And we found them, got close and got some good shots without disturbing them. The trick about photographing Arctic foxes do not follow them. Never, never go after an Arctic fox. It will know you're trying to go after it and uh, you will never win that fight. You should rather sit down, wait, watch it, even though it's going to take a long time. And uh, from our experience, they often get curious, they come closer, and sometimes they just dance around us and uh, as you can see in some of our footage they they come within a few meters and that's a pure adventure that's that's an experience and obviously the adults were not close usually we can find out if if that's the fact sometimes the adults sleep 
behind the rock, keep one eye open, and they possibly might have been watching us from a far distance. But I don't, don't think they were, because we found out later that the male gave us a big surprise. It came up into the wind. We always try to have the wind from the Arctic foxes to us. This time, the male came behind us and he, uh, he got us, he caught us watching the cubs and the sound he, it made were fantastic. But what a beautiful animal, a white male and absolutely beautiful. In the summertime, they, they're not totally white like in winter. They get this uh, beautiful uh, yellow, gray, moss kind, kind of color. A little bit like this moss right here. It's beautiful and uh, the, this one was absolutely beautiful. The amazing thing about the Arctic fox, like this adult came obviously coming from a long distance because as soon as it had seen us, complained to us, what are you doing here, by calling out to us. We stepped a little bit back, moved back, and uh, watched from a distance. And it watched us, it, it took no more than two minutes, then it fell asleep. Then it fell asleep. This happens over and over again. We meet an adult, they come, they watch the cubs from a distance and they fall asleep. They want to sleep somewhere else than the cubs because the cubs are always bothering them. As soon as it was sleeping, we just went away and uh, called it a day. A few days later we came back and uh, we wanted to see how the cubs were doing and uh, wanted to see if we could find them again. After a long search then we look behind us and a cub is following us. We must have walked past it sleeping somewhere. It's so easy to miss them. They, it might have been sleeping a few meters away from us and uh, we didn't notice but it followed us. At least it came up and uh, we noticed it was walking in the direction we were walking. And it was the one with a white paw. We were hoping to see more of the cubs. We didn't. We searched for them for hours. We only found this one. And the mystery was we never had seen the female. A few days before, the male had surprised us, but we never saw the female. This, this time, we wanted to see if, uh, if we would wait in, in a far distance from where the couple was sleeping, that eventually the female would come. So, we waited. There's a lot of things that go through your head when you're watching something like this. You, you're you in the middle of a huge lava field. There's a cup sleeping there. You don't know if it has 
someone to take care of it. And uh, we had seen the male. In this trip we did not see more cubs and uh, we wondered if they were dead or something. So it was a big question, where is the female, the mother? Since the cubs were brown, I guess the female would be brown. The male was probably the white one. After waiting and uh, the cold was getting to us a little bit, finally she came from the far distance running like a lightning towards us. Obviously super tired and I noticed that it was like the left leg, the back leg was like it was stiff. It looked old, it looked tired, the female. It finally happened. The female came after a long wait. And a few days ago we met the male. Now we have finally seen the female. And uh, right now it's sleeping about. 70 meters away from us. The cup is following. 20 meters away here. Now the cup is about 20 meters beyond the camera. She is sleeping over there. And uh, Gila is freezing. It was amazing to see her finally arrive. It was worth it. It was worth it to see them, but the question is, there were four cubs here. Now we have only seen one. I think they are sleeping somewhere. Oh, I was so happy to see that. And Gila was super happy because we had been talking about how difficult it was not to know how the, how the female looked and uh, if she was alive. Occasionally when we were changing lenses and some clicking sounds were heard, she opened one eye looking in the direction of us and uh, this tells me that we are disturbing her. So after a while being silent we crawled away and left her alone and uh, Last time I saw her, she was sleeping. 